All right, I want to highlight um, kind of a new update as part of our uh, version four of our ESS portal application. And this is particular to um, web service based card objects. We kind of started to create this before in previous versions and we've added a little more functionality to it in version four. Um, so this is primarily, you know, using uh, kind of a defined type of record that would actually get its content uh, from a connection, a REST based connection to an external system. So let me highlight a couple examples that we've kind of bundled with our application as a kind of boilerplate. You'd still have to connect with your own credentials and things, but, um, but let me kind of highlight how they are. One of them is this Kaleo integration. And what Kaleo is, is basically a question and answer kind of tool. Um, so this is something that, uh, you know, through the portal, we might have a question about how do I do something. It could connect to Kaleo, get an answer, pull it back, show it to the user via the portal, um, and, and then be able to click on it and see the details of it as well. So the first thing you'll kind of see in here is uh, I'll kind of start in this connection script. Uh, so ultimately it's making a REST based connection. We're making a connection to the URL, a get method, and then passing various parameters such as the token to make our connection, fields, um, kind of number of items per page, and the term we're querying off of, and then an authentication token as well. So that's kind of ultimately this is the connection point. And then the connection point is going to respond back with um, a set of, of, of JSON or, or uh, kind of a result set. The way we process that is any of the attributes of that result set. You'll see rest attribute here of best answer summary ID title. So these are the mapping those results that we get um, in a JSON format to various attributes that we can then display via the portal. You'll notice here there's some related to what URL we do to actually show the user the, the end results. Now one other point on here too is that sometimes the result, the response we get back from the REST connection is that the results might be in some sort of attribute. Uh, you'll see a collection attribute defined here. So if you if you need to, you can define that here to say this is the attribute within the result that we get where the list of records is going to be housed. Um, and then the rest down here, the, the processing script is just kind of like we have in our other card objects, a way to define the, the footer or other kind of uh, computed scripted components that you want to display as part of that resulting card object. All right, so then a couple of the things I want to hit on here. Um, so first of all, you'll see map to a type. Uh, so the type record is pretty basic. It's got some sets here in terms of descriptions, uh, an active flag, uh, color code, and then the order in which it should show up in the list of other types. Uh, an icon to delineate this uh, this kind of card object from others. And then you'll see in here a number of scripts to make this connection. Now one thing I want to call out <clears throat> is, um, so like for example, this particular uh, uh, connection, you'll see it's trying to do a search for a term to go find Kaleo uh, results that match that search term. Well the way we can get that is we can pass in uh, the card objects or the this card lister set of filters. Um, so this is a, a list of filters that uh, we define on the card object type. I'll show another example of this in a minute. Um, and then we can, in, in essence, script to interact with those here. So this gives me back the full list of filters. Uh, I can then take that list of filters and extract the one that's called search string. If there is no uh, value, then replace it with just a blank. So in essence, this, these two lines here are saying, look at my defined filters for my card object type that have been specified um, and go give me a specific value. So this is in essence a way to take kind of the parameters that a user might enter and providing them or passing them in. The rest of this uh, it kind of defines getting the building the token for me authenticating to uh, Kaleo, the URL to connect to their site, um, assigning the token. Now uh, one other thing I want to highlight here too is there's a couple special variables in play in this connection script. One is this added.props uh, which can have very can any number of um, kind of attributes. So this is in essence a, a JSON object. You can assign different attributes to this. And the benefit of this, or the purpose of this, is a way for you to define um, kind of values or set values in your connection script that will persist in your mapping to your attributes. And the reason we do it, like in this case, you'll see we're mapping in the token, we're mapping in the host, because those uh, attributes we will use down here in the actual URL that we build. You'll see we map into current.addedProperties host, current.addedProperties token are part of that uh, URL that we're building 
as part of the each result set. So this allows us to kind of set some values in the initial connection, what is the host, what's our, to our token we're using, and kind of allow those to be part of that response of each one of those uh, objects that we interact with. The other one <clears throat> uh, worth noting in here is you will see use server storage and then use server storage or server storage age, which is the age of those records. Now what this is going to do is if I flag this, um, by default if I didn't have this line in here, um, it will basically take whatever the endpoint is that I'm connecting to and use that as my key for caching. Uh, so any results that I get back for that, that endpoint would be stored in the server cache table uh, so that when I run that same search again for that same endpoint, it would, um, uh, it would basically pull from the server cache rather than go out and make another REST call to that source. So this is a way to improve the performance and kind of uh, reduce the number of uh, REST web service calls that we've made to the, uh, to the endpoint. Um, this REST cache key variable, it's in this connection script, this is an option in that if you want to uh, define your own kind of key, that uh, uh, that is unique, um, you can define that here using this variable. So one of the things we're doing with this one is the problem is the endpoint for Kaleo is basically is just this top URL, um, and then we're setting a number of query parameters that don't get baked into that uh, endpoint. So we're using a uh, kind of one that's defining the term that you're searching for and the user that's running the search. So for each user, each search term, that's a separate um, kind of server cached record, right? And I can show you where that ends up, or shows in the, in, in the end. All right, so now that I've defined this, this guy is active, active card type, active uh, uh, type definition. So let's actually, let me show you this one in action. So let's go and add um, the Kaleo to our kind of search results. So if I go to our card objects and I activate or, or add Kaleo to our search page, save that. I go in our portal. Let's do a search for iPad. And there's our type ahead. I'll just kind of hide that just so you can see. So one thing is, so you're going to see this little bolt. Well, those are our Kaleo records. If we look under types, you'll see Kaleo in here. And again, the order is going to define how it shows up in the list. Um, but it basically, as it ran through, it made uh, made queries to go get the records from our catalog items and knowledge sources and business services, but when it came to Kaleo, it made a connection through REST web service to go to that endpoint, go get those results, and show them back in here. Right, if I open these up, you'll see um, they do have relevant scores, uh, so there is some weighting mapping of that, uh, which I'll highlight real quickly here. You'll see there is a relevant score we get back from Kaleo. We're basically passing that in and adding it to the weight. Some of the other sources you connect to, and you're, if you're going to merge them in with your search results, uh, you may need to manipulate or, or boost or adjust this so it blends in appropriately with the other ServiceNow results. Um, and then obviously we can hide the Kaleo records from here, or we can hide the you know, ServiceNow records from here to just show the Kaleo ones. In essence, it's, it's, it's uh, sorting them based off of that relevant score, which in essence allows you for kind of this mixed results. Now the way these web service ones are set up as far as getting the detail of them is uh, there isn't a separate page specifically inside of, um, inside of our portal to show the detail of these REST web services, but they allow us to show them in a list, kind of the summarized information in the list. And when you click on them, then we pop them out to um, either pop them out to a separate page or in this case, pop them out into a separate kind of pop-up modal um, and show the details kind of natively within that source record. So this is kind of the URL for that. The other card object type I'll just hit on, this one was one we had in our list before, but we've kind of uh, adjusted this a little further, is, uh, is connecting to uh, Trello as a kind of task board kind of solution. Um, and this one is a little, the only thing I'm going to call out with this one a little bit is that the endpoint for the Trello is unique in that um, the URL that we connect to, to um, the Trello is going to have uh, the token in it. It's also going to have a direct URL specifically to that includes what fields we want, what queries we want to run, what boards we're connecting to, etc. But the one thing I want to highlight with this, the way this one's set up is, I guess, two things. One is there is no REST cache key in here. 
um, there is a reference to another variable that um, I didn't mention before is this one called rest active which by default is set to is set to true but I can set it to false here which what's that going to what that's going to tell the kind of engine behind this is if this is set to false it's not going to make a rest web service call to uh, to this case to Trello it's going to pull back a blank result set every time if it's set to false so we're using this in this case to say <clears throat> only set this to active if uh, we can actually if we have this Trello integration configured uh, we actually have a board ID specified within our filters if we have that uh, then we can go ahead and set rest active to true actually make a connection actually get results back so we can kind of suppress uh, the execution of the rest call uh, if if under certain circumstances or conditions don't apply so the other thing to highlight here is we don't have a rest cache key being defined here. As I noted, the endpoints are unique, um, but we do have server caching set here with an age, so it is going to store those records as well. And just to highlight what those look like, right, so I can show you kind of like the Kaleo ones that we just did. So in essence, what you've got here are the results and then the data that was pulled back, which kind of looks like this. So this is setting, in essence, the uh, last build date of when it compiled. This is what's comparing for age purposes, and then a list of all the cards that we display. And this is kind of the transformed output. This isn't the uh, uh, this isn't the REST response, but the transformed output that's being server side cached. So in essence, it's going to return back just the straight uh, resulting data to the user uh, without having to make a REST call. All right. So the other thing, if I go back to that. Trello card object that's a little unique uh, is so if I go to the type there are a number of filters on here so we are defining kind of a Trello board you want to connect to the list of fields and the list of open cards All right, so you'll see Trello board Trello field list Trello open if you go back to our connection script you'll see we're making use of all of these what's the board that's being specified uh, what's the open flag? Is that set to open or, or closed cards? Uh, what's the field list we want to use uh, for making the connection? So each one of those parameters, in essence, are, are filters that the user can specify. So just to kind of highlight or show you how this looks. All right, so I can go to card list or test page. If you remember in that connection script, rest active was false if I didn't have a board. So in this case, the board's not specified. It's really going to return no results to Trello <clears throat> unless I give it a board. All right, so I can come in here and give it a board. You'll see now it makes a connection. Here's my other my other filters, card open, field field list. Uh, in essence, makes a very similar to like the, the Kaleo, makes a connection to Trello, pulls back, maps some data, uh, pulls back some additional like reference key. And there is a, uh, a card object action associated with this too. So I can see the view card details which allows me to, um, let's say I want to look for something like this, allows me to click on it, which then takes me to that URL specific to, to Trello. In this case, it doesn't do it as a modal, but instead pops it up as kind of a separate tab, separate window to go to Trello. So that covers kind of what I wanted to show as far as, you know, setting up uh, um, uh, a card object to be a rest based connection uh, you know, a lot of it's defined inside the script there's some variables there that we can use to deactivate the rest connection their uh, use of the filters to pass parameters in that you would use um, as well as the use of the server storage to improve the speed in which it can run uh, and get that data on uh, kind of a repeat basis so hopefully it was helpful and thank you very much